Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Today we're going to wrap up our radical chapter with um, really cool kinds of, of radicals, imaginary numbers. And the imaginary numbers are part of what's called the complex number system, okay? So today we're going to start learning about imaginary numbers. Please don't stress, this is actually quite easy. Just try to remember this as we go forward. You want to use the imaginary unit, which I'll explain now is i. You want to use that as if it was a variable. And that's all I'm going to say for now. Okay? You want to think of that as if it was a variable. And it's a variable that represents the square root of negative 1. Up to this point, we have only been working with real number systems. Okay, real numbers, real values. Today we will learn about the complex number system. Recall that if you were given an even index radical with a negative radicand, you could not work with it. Now we can. Remember I told you, okay guys, if I have the square root of negative 4, remember I told you, what times itself is negative 4? Nothing. So that would be no real solution. You cannot solve that. Well, that's gone. As of today, we can. Let me show you how it works. An imaginary unit, okay, represented by literally the letter I. It's a lowercase, not a capital. Please do not make that, that mistake. Capital I stands for simple interest, to be honest with you. So little i is imaginary number. Where? Straight up I by itself, that value of I is the square root of negative 1. If I take the square root of negative 1, let's think about it logically, and square it, don't the square roots cancel with the square? So I squared equals negative 1. If I take I squared, which is negative 1, and I multiply another I to it, what's negative 1 times I? It's just like a variable. What's negative 1 times x, guys? So what's negative 1 times i? Negative i. And if I take that negative i and I multiply it by another i, I'm going to get negative 1 times a negative 1, which is 1. These four you want to commit to memory. You want to own this forever. Really important, okay? So these are the imaginary units. A complex number, though, is a combination of an imaginary unit and a real unit. Complex numbers in the form of A plus BI, where A is known as the real part and B is known as the imaginary part. For example, they'll give you something like 5 plus 2i. 5 is the real part. 2 is the imaginary part. Why isn't the i included? That's why it's the imaginary part, because it's next to the i. So that's what a complex number is. It's going to have an imaginary unit and a real unit. Now, how do we simplify? This sounds really cool. This is great, Mr. Moore. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it work? Whenever I have the square root of a negative value, my friends, the first thing, before I simplify, before I do anything, before I break it down, before I find its factors, before I find it's a perfect square or a perfect cube, if I have a square, actually, cubes, it wouldn't work because cubes can be negative. If I have a negative value inside of a square root, pull out the i. Why? When I have the square root of negative x, can't this really be broken down into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of x? Would that not be the same? Because they both have the same radicands, right? What's the square root of negative 1 that we have already determined? i times the square root of x. So whenever I have a negative inside of a square root, pull that negative out as an i. For example, square root of negative 6 
Can't break anything down here, but I sure as heck fire can get rid of that negative. So it's going to be I square root of 6. Negative 27. Don't get confused by the negative. Get rid of the negative immediately by putting an I outside. Trust me, guys. Now break this down. This is 9 times 3. So square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3I square root of 3. But Mr. Morrow, what happened to the negative? The negative is encapsulated with the I. Square root of negative 64. Don't think about the negative for one second. What's the square root of 64? 8. But I have this negative, so it's 8i. Square root of negative 18. Okay, let's pull out that negative as an i. I got i, square root of 18. That's 9 times 2. So I got 3i, square root of 2. It's not that bad, is it, actually, guys? See? I'm sure you thought this was going to be a lot worse than it actually is. It's not that bad. Does that make sense? And may I continue? Thank you, gentlemen. When simplifying complex numbers, you must write the simplified answer always in standard form. Standard form, when you have numbers and, and imaginary units together, must always be A plus or minus BI. The real part first, plus or minus the imaginary part. So don't stress. You know how to do this. This is 4 minus the square root of negative 36. What's the square root of 36? So this is minus 6i. Done. Done. I promise. Can I factor out a 2? Yes. Do you have to? Not unless you're asked to. But I know that some of you like to go all the way with the, the factoring and reducing, so I wanted to put it out there. Maybe extra credit. A plus square root of negative 32. Okay. Remember what I told you. Don't stress out with the negative. In fact, I always used to do this. I would go A plus I immediately. Now, for whatever reason, maybe it's just my limited brain, but... For whatever reason, once I took that negative out, once I pull it out as a Y, to me, everything just opens up, and it's a lot easier. That's me, though. This is 16 times 2, of course. So this is 8 plus 4I. Excellent, gentlemen. Square root of 2. See, you guys are going to do better than this than me. Now, 4 minus square root of 20. That is wrong. Doofus. Should be minus a negative 20. I apologize about that. This is going to be 4 minus i square root of 20 over 2. Square root of 20 is 4 times 5. So this is going to work out to be 4 minus 2i square root of 5 over 2. Always remember this 2 can divide to both of these. So this would equal 2 minus i square root of 5. I heard some people whispering it. Good job. You know, you're, you're doing the calculations yourself. That's great. Beautiful. Proud of you. Okay, I see some faces that are a little bit funky. Talk to me, guys. I definitely don't want to rush this. If we can't finish today, we'll finish tomorrow. How, how, how are we doing? My brother, talk to me. You good? For B, it could also be um, 4, uh, Yes. 2 plus, uh, I two. You are a baller. Good job. Great job, brother. Great job. Does that make sense? May I continue? Okay. Thank you, brothers. Okay, guys. Now, when adding or subtracting complex numbers, simply add or subtract the real parts with the real parts and add the imaginary parts with the imaginary parts. This is Mickey Mouse. I'm telling you. Remember how I told you at the beginning of the lesson, pretend that it's a variable? Guys, if that was just an X, would this even phase you? Don't let it phase you. 
this is negative 3 plus 8i. Distribute like normal. Minus 7 plus 3i. Real parts with real parts. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. Imaginary parts with imaginary parts plus 11i. Done. It is just like a variable, except this variable equals square root of negative 1. But other than that, it's the same jazz, y'all. Same jazz. Sometimes they give it to you where they want you to convert first. So this is going to become 6 plus 7i plus negative 4 plus 3i. So 6 minus 4 is 2 plus 7i plus 3i is 10i. Bam. Come again. Or you could, sorry, or you could factor that out. Yes, sir. So it's 2 times 1 plus 5i. 100%. I appreciate y'all's enthusiasm. That's great. Great. For C, same thing. Let's go ahead.